Welcome to Winging It, Cooking Everything with Carlos and Rod. I'm Rod. Carlos. Today we have a celebrity chef, lawyer Sawyer, Scott Sawyer, one of our good <laughs> friends. And uh, he's going to teach us how to make some sauce using our fresh tomatoes. What do you call the sauce? The sauce is my uh, Sicilian Barber's tomato sauce. Um, Why do you call to, that? I call it that, you know, just here in New London, what we ended up doing was is I would get the last appointment of the day. Uh, and what we would do is, is I get in the chair, get a great haircut. <laughs> and uh, we, <laughs> we bring out some vodka, and all we do is exchange. <laughs> all we do is exchange uh, recipes and talk about food. So this is one of his recipes, and uh, it's really, really straightforward. So that's good. You're perfect for this show then, because Carlos and I like food and we like drinking. That's so right. um, these right. are some tomatoes that are actually from my garden during the first few weeks of pandemic we shut hot rise down just to give the staff a break and to help with social distancing and um i turned half of the restaurant into a greenhouse and now it's starting to get the fruits of those that labor so these are tomatoes from the garden it's got to be against the law to look this damn good because baby i feel real good and i wish i would it's got to be against the law to look this damn good Everybody watch out, watch out now, I'm ready for a good time, and I came to groove, the whole band's here, and we came to move, got a fresh haircut and two new shoes. And if you want to just go ahead and walk us through what right. ingredients we have and... Yeah, so basically it's like really, really important to have like very, very fresh tomatoes, and thank goodness Rod has been busy in the garden getting them for us. Um, with these tomatoes, basically what we do is rip off the stems. If I can actually get it off, I would, but you know, you rip off the stems, but you just keep everything else um, because eventually this is gonna be uh, uh, broken down in a, uh, in a saucepan as well as it's going to be uh, put in a blender. So basically what we do is we have the fresh uh, tomatoes, Carlos is going to cut them all in half. Sure. And uh, basically what we'll then do is we'll lay them out on the pan, uh, which is pretty straightforward. And then um, on each one, um, we also have garlic. We have lots and lots of basil. And uh, of course, olive oil, OK? And um, so basically what we do is we start there. And then uh, what you do is, is it's important to take the tomatoes, OK, and have them cut side up. Those are beautiful tomatoes, okay. if I do say so. Those myself. are. And I try to, like, um, you know, home cooking, basically, you know, I don't have this size pan, but a smaller pan, um, you really jam the tomatoes in next to each other. And then, basically, what we do is, is we just lay them all out. There we go. So the way this kind of came about is, um, as we're getting new things from the garden, I put out on Facebook um, that I'm looking for anybody who has a recipe from their grandmother or something on how to use the fresh tomatoes to make a fresh sauce, because I had no idea how to make a fresh fresh sauce. So Scott actually answered, and um, he DM'd me the actual recipe, and it was I liked it because it was simple. As you can see, it's only like five ingredients. It's um, It was the only one that it's actually baked in the oven, so there's no blanching and peeling of the tomatoes, so we decided to give it a shot. and. Um, Scott wouldn't want to do it. So what do we have next there? So basically what I'll do is, is um, while I'm putting out the rest of the tomatoes, I'm going to have Carlos uh, slice the garlic really, really, like almost paper thin. And then what we'll do is lay garlic all over the top of nice. each of the tomatoes. Good. Again, that's why Carlos is the only one trusted with a sharp knife. So that's <laughs> why. Liability, liability. Exactly. Although we have our lawyer here, but still we don't want to, <laughs> we don't, want to we don't need the paramedics time. or anything. You know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, this, is, this is a lot of fun. So once once we get these set up, we put them in a uh, 450 degree oven, I think, Carlos, preheated to 400, 400, 400 degree yeah. oven. 400. Yep. And then you just kind of let it, what do you do? About, basically what you just sort of let it be, you know, for about 30 minutes, 35 okay. minutes. And what you're really looking for is you're looking for the tomatoes to sort of brown, and then you're looking for all the drizzle to start sort of caramelizing on the pan. Okay. Because that's the most valuable stuff. And that's what you're saying, or we have to deglaze yeah, the pan. Yeah, so then what you do after. is with your pan, you just put it on the, the stove top, and then you take your white wine and basically... Oh, that's what the wine is for, okay. The white wine, and never, ever, ever cook with anything you wouldn't drink. Especially while you're cooking. <laughs> We're not doing that right now. We can do some drinking after. That's right. We'll now, do did it you get clearance <laughs> from your Sicilian barber? Because I don't want any problems. No, you I want mean, any problems. All right. Okay. No, no, no. no. 
He and I are dear friends. All right. So um, basically what I do now is, is before I put on the uh, garlic, garlic, basically what I do is, is I just drizzle, just drizzle the olive oil over the top. And you can be generous with it. I wouldn't be too worried about how much I, how much you use. It's got also kind of a foodie aside from being a lawyer. We actually took a pizza cooking class in New York together. Oh yeah. And, and the old olive oil debate. What what do you guys think? Um, I hear Spanish olive oil is the best olive oil. I spent a few months in Spain. I heard that. Right. Some people say Italian. What, what do you think, Carlos? And what do you think, Scott? What's the, your favorite olive oil? The best olive oil? Uh, to me, I, I find interesting. Um, it's true. It all depends where the olive oil comes. The different flavor. Um, usually, I like the uh, from Italy. Italy? Uh, yeah. Italy. I think they they manage to make the best in what is like an olive oil and. What kind of sauces too? Okay. I met a few people in Spain that might disagree with that, but okay. All right. Yeah, got any garlic ready? We can start placing some of that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just grab some. Sure. How about you, Scott? What do you think? All right. So basically, um, what I think is, is the grassier the better. You know, so Scott's fancy. From, I don't know what that means, man. Oh, what do you mean the grassy? <laughs> if, you, if you taste olive oil, like really good olive oil, um, if it tastes kind of like grass it's like the best or it smells like grass you know freshly cut grass huh. you know it's the best i've never heard that. i'm learning so, something completely unscripted i've never heard of that so basically what you do is on each one of these after you put the olive oil on the tomatoes you're just placing garlic on each one and i'll, I'll do this pretty quickly i mean normally i be a little bit more careful about. So if you were home, would you already be a couple of glasses of wine in, or is that, is that part of your, the secret, or usually wait until the glazing point and do some wine? Yeah, I, I probably this would be about there. Okay. All right. By now, you know, but uh, you know, I'm trying to be professional on All right. here, but uh, pretty, do, we're do, pretty do, laid back show, I Carlos do, and I. I we're, <laughs> we're laid back restaurant, laid back show. Apparently, we have sipped a little on the on, you know, on the clock. <laughs> now the we clock. have folks over. I, I seem to not only do the cooking but the entertainment. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I'm being a little generous with the garlic, um, just for sake of some speed here. But you know, you you, you never can put too much yeah. garlic. Yeah, we love no, garlic. I don't. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I, fresh garlic. Oh, and you can't use whatever you do. Yeah. Do not use something from a can, from a jar. Um, don't do it. Don't Use do it if you cut it the day before. It'll it'll go bad. It has to be it'll fresh garlic. Kind of rancid. Everything is fresh is better. Uh, yeah. It reminds me of some movie. Were you talking about cutting the garlic thin? What was that movie? Uh, right. They were they, they, when they went to the mattress and they were like, you gotta see, you gotta cut it real thin. Right. Like they always use a razor blade right, to cut right. the garlic. Uh -huh. It melts away. And tempt, and he had this wonderful system for doing the garlic. He used a razor and he used to slice it so thin that it used to liquefy in the pan with just a little oil. It's a very good system. Vinny was in charge of the tomato sauce. Wow. Is that yeah. where you learned? Did you learn this in jail? Uh, or? Uh, I, my, my brief jail time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you learned it from the movie, yeah, probably. Learned it. <laughs> really don't want to get into that. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, there was no garlic cutting. Okay. Uh, it was mostly meditation. And, okay, uh, all right. Right. But, uh, <laughs> all right. So, so you get it covered. Uh, yeah, so we're getting the garlic on there, and and you know this is probably the most difficult part is just having the patience of putting the garlic on. You know, and uh, not one of my strong suits, so that's yeah, why you're patience, doing it. Patience, yeah. I just yeah, I can see Rob <laughs> breathing down my throat. Let's get this going. Get it going. You know. So I mean that looks about right. You know. So we have a little bit of extra. We don't want to keep that on the pan. We don't need that. And then basically on each, uh, then on each uh, each of these. Like right about now, I just like take a little bit of salt and pepper. You know, I tend to like things more on the salty side. I know one of the things you had asked me is whether or not, um, you know, there's something for sweetness. Right. You know, whether it would be carrot or some sugar. You know, hey, I you just, yelled at me and said, no, this is straight from Sicily, no, no sugar. You just told me that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so. He yelled, so, yeah. yelled a little bit. So, you know, basically, I mean, you can do this very quickly. I always like tearing garlic. A ba a basil. No. Or basil, sorry. Yeah, I like to te tear the basil and... Rather than uh, cut it, there's a difference? Yeah, yeah. a lot better flavor when huh. you just tear. Like if you're making Do you like... spank it first or just tear it? <laughs> Is that basil that these yeah, 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 you could do that. Sure. People do that. I just tear it, um, you know, as you... <laughs> I was being serious. I've heard no, that. Sometimes no, no, people no, spank I, their I, herbs. I'm not trying to be funny. I, I, <laughs> you don't spank your herbs. 
I, I haven't spanked my herbs lately. Okay, all right, all right. Know? Mint, and you can do it with mint and stuff. <laughs> No, but uh, yes, actually, look, heard, actually, it looks I, nice. I, it almost looks like that salad you make. What's yeah. that salad you with the fresh mozzarella? Salad. Yeah, it almost looks like that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with that too. It's like I don't, I never cut, I never cut the mozzarella. I always rip it, always tear it. Hmm. And the same thing with the um, with the basil. I is it because you're not good with the knife, or is it no, just no, better? I am. Oh yeah, no, I'm good with the knife. <laughs> it's like, but the idea is, is that it's just better. <laughs> You know, especially with especially the mozzarella. I These think. are the kind of little tips that we like to yeah. do on the show because they actually have people. But my tomato cooking. basil mozzarella is like so good. And yeah, so it's probably the second best in the area. Yeah. Yes, that's what I heard. You know, Carlos's and, and then then Carl, Carlos. <laughs> Sorry, lawyer. I think Carlos does is better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, this is kind of just the way it's the way it sort of pan, pans out, so to speak. And uh, it looks pretty too. Yeah, and it's nice. And basically, when it comes out, it will not look this pretty. It'll just it'll just look like a tremendous amount of flavor. Now we're reserving some of the basil and garlic yeah. for when we no garlic, we're up no the more sauce. garlic, no more garlic, no okay. more garlic. But when we were up the sauce yeah. and the yeah, and then basically what's going to happen is this is going to come out kind of it'll be it'll look brown, but the insides of the tomatoes will all still be red, mm -hmm. so that when we blend it, it'll still get that really fresh bright flavor and uh, it'll be beautiful looking. And that's it right now, no more oil, that's no it. more wine. Nothing. All right, so we're gonna go slide this in the oven and then we'll be back in yeah. about a half hour. This is good. Cool. Yeah. All right, good. So you got that? Yeah. All right, so what we're doing is putting that in 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. All right, so um, <clears throat> at 400 degrees, Commercial oven, it's a little hot. So it only took about 20 minutes or so, but at home, 400 degrees for about uh, 30 minutes would do it. So what you're looking for is you're looking for sort of the brownness. You still have like a really rich red of the tomato, but you also have like the brownness that you can see on the pan itself. And then basically, um, what you also what you're looking for is is this on the pan itself. You have like little bits of garlic, little bits of uh, sort of very roasted uh, olive oil, as well as um, little bits of basil. So that's really what you're looking for for all of the uh, for all of that wonderful flavor. So basically, what we'll do now is um, we're going to take the we're going to take the tomatoes. We're going to put them all in the uh, in a bowl, or if you were able to, you'd put them directly into a food processor or a blender if you have a blender at home and don't have a food processor. I usually use a blender, but either way is perfectly fine. And I'm really kind of scraping this down a little bit, getting as much as I can, because what I really want left in the pan, uh, the baking uh, pan, is, is just the really hard stuff. I want that. Um, so that when we take the pan over to the stove top, we're gonna add white wine and we're gonna deglaze the pan. So basically what we're doing now is we're adding some white wine. I usually pick like a Chablis, a French Chablis has good uh, a good strong wine, not a, not a sweet wine, whatever you do, no sweet wines. So you get the pan nice and hot after you've taken the tomatoes off. You add white wine. Of course the pan explodes because <laughs> the wine's cold. Um, but then what you do is you just start working all of this goodness off of the pan. You can see how it's also a great way to clean your pan. Um, the idea is, is you end up getting all of this off. And what you want to do is, is you don't want the, the wine to completely evaporate, but as you can imagine, you, you pretty much want the, uh, the wine to um, cook off all the alcohol. So you can see that there are all these bits and you can see the wine is turning sort of a caramel color. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that caramely color to the wine. And it has a redness to it also from the tomatoes uh, that have been roasted into the pan. 
All right, so that's basically that. And then what we do is we just um, add this to the sauce and um, we'll be in really good shape. All right, the tomatoes are out of the oven. Scott deglazed the pan and this is what we have right here. So we're gonna take it from here and you're gonna process it up, right? Yeah, so basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have uh, the greatest chef on the planet, Carlos. <laughs> He's gonna take, um, take uh, one of the spoons and just spoon out as much of the tomatoes that'll either fit in a food processor or in, the, uh, or in a blender. And basically, you know, this is, this is a little uh, liquidy, so you're gonna wanna concentrate on just bringing over the tomatoes and then you can use the liquid to sort of loosen it up a little bit. So I'm gonna have Carlos do that. And the ingredients at this point, we still have olive oil, so we're gonna add about a quarter cup of olive oil, because you can never have too much olive oil. And then we're gonna add what I like firmly, about a quarter cup of firmly packed um, basil. We're gonna add that also. So basically what we're doing is, is we're layering the flavors. So the first, the first layer of flavors is everything that's cooked. The second layer is everything that's gonna be just warmed. Uh, with whatever residual heat's left in the, pos in the sauce. So um, basically, if you want to thicken up your sauce, what you're going to end up doing is adding some pos pasta water. And, um, you know, we had a little discussion on right. <laughs> Where do you get <laughs> pasta water? <laughs> right. There were some questions, is it available at Stop and Shop or Aldi's or, you know. And the reality is that it's just the water the, the, that, that you have left after you've cooked your pasta. So what you want to do is sort of ladle out uh, a couple of spoonfuls, put them aside, and then you uh, basically drain it. That's only pasta. if you want it thicker, right? That's, That's just if you want it thicker. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. what it does is it ends up um, uh, allowing your sauce to adhere a little bit better to your pasta. Hmm. All right, so basically we're gonna have uh, there you go. uh, Carlos, he's gonna plunk in another handful of uh, basil and maybe just a little bit of olive oil. You know, basically he, he, mixed, he already uh, blended a little bit, so he's just gonna pulse it once or twice and then that'll give us this next layer of flavor. Right. First, I'd like to just see what the consistency is, and you can see that it has a, oh, still has, has a nice. nice, meaty, nice, meaty consistency, and, um, you know, there are a couple chunks that doesn't really matter. You can see that, you know, most of the basil's been uh, very much uh, ground up, but this stuff, you still have nice chunks of basil. That looks great. All right. Smells great, too. And uh, I'm learning my lessons. Put down, the, put down the spoon, and then you actually taste it. See how it goes. And at this point in time, you kind of want to get an idea of if you want any more salt and pepper. I think it's perfect. Perfectly fine. You guys try it. See sure. if you like it. That is good. That was good. Yeah. It's, it's that bright. might be the second best tomato sauce yeah. in New London, Connecticut. Is it? Right there. I think it might be. <laughs> yeah. It's like really nice, isn't the it? The cool it's thing like, about this too is like when you're talking about thickening it with the um, pasta where you could also just reduce it more and cook it you down can. more and more and more, right? And then so. you use, then you just put it on the stove top, all right? So Carlos will put it on the stove top sure. and basically then what you end up doing is, is you end up just letting it sit there and simmer, all right? And um, as it sort of sort of reduces, then you can add more pasta water. I mean, it's, it's, it's just kind more of- More garlic? Can you add more garlic? No, no, you said no garlic. Done. Like, okay. You're done, with, you're done with the ingredients except for pasta water at this point. Well, you can add sauces, a little bit more- meatballs. You can add a little more white wine unless you've actually drank it all, <laughs> um, which is usually the case, right. but- uh, No such thing as extra wine. It it's a lot of fun, you guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This was great. Thanks for coming thanks. on. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Our uh, first guest chef. Wow, yeah, this was super. Uh, I, I like it because, you know, every time, like I said before, it's like you never stop learning. Yeah, little tricks, little this, little that, little tips to make you like to knowledge. Anything you want to cook, you add it and remember whatever. Like there's a right. way that I learn and I wake up. I try to keep it going, like watching videos, watching people on the internet, watching people on TV. You can even learn from a lawyer. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, you know, that, that, that's knowledge thing. everywhere. Uh, yeah, it's knowledge everywhere. everywhere. That's yeah. for sure. It's a good, it, we were joking around earlier, but this could be a good first date meal if you're single and you want to whip something else. Five ingredients, some wine, all you need is a blender and a, and a burner, right? That's and, it. Um, right. Stove. They'll be impressed. <laughs> <laughs>